If you told me 10 years ago that today I'd be an applied scientist at Amazon working on production machine learning, I wouldn't have believed you. Because at the time, I was working at a jewelry company with a political science degree. I had zero technical background beyond customizing my MySpace in 2006. This isn't another one of my you can do it motivational videos. Today I'm going to share the specific courses, books, and resources that actually got me to where I am today. By the end, you'll know not just what I learned, but also what wasted time that I haven't ended up needing at all in my career. For those who are new here, I dropped out of high school after 10th grade, eventually got degrees in political science and public policy, and somehow ended up as an applied scientist handling the entire machine learning life cycle, from research to production deployment. This journey has taken me about seven years of dedicated learning, and I'm definitely not done yet. So how did I go from political science to machine learning? Let's break it down step by step. When I started, I had almost no technical skills. The only useful thing from my undergrad years was a really rigorous statistics course, which turned out to be super valuable. Looking back, I wish I had taken more math. Linear algebra and calculus would have made everything easier. Instead, I had to play catch up later, which I'll tell you about in a bit. When I started my master's in public policy, I didn't even know what data science or machine learning was, but I knew I would need programming basics for the program. So I panic purchased these Udemy courses, the complete Python bootcamp, Python for Data Science and Machine Learning, and R programming from A to Z. If you're just starting out, skip R and focus on Python. R was logical for me going into a social science master's program, but it won't be necessary for the vast majority of you. At first, I was pretty overwhelmed. I was studying every morning before work and really not feeling super comfortable with anything about this. But after about two months, something clicked. One morning, I realized I could write a small program without Googling every line, and that was the first time I thought, okay, this is actually kind of fun. I think I can do this. During grad school, I strategically chose the most technical courses available among the social science curriculum. So I was lucky, and that included things like traditional statistics with R, causal inference, Python programming, machine learning fundamentals with a social science tilt, deep learning and NLP, and oddly enough, a specialized course on logistic regression. I had great machine learning and stats professors, and I learned a lot both in school and during my thesis project, which was about predicting who someone voted for from their web browsing history, but don't worry, they consented. It was creepy, but super fun. At the same time, I of course was taking policy-focused courses. They didn't seem relevant then, but they ended up being a pretty big advantage. I learned how to translate between technical concepts and business or social problems, something that many computer science grads kind of struggle with. So this is just a reminder that your interdisciplinary background can help you, even if it takes a little more studying to catch up. Knowing academics alone wouldn't cut it in the job market, I supplemented with self-study while I was in grad school. Specifically, I took more Udemy courses on Tableau, Power BI, SQL, data science interview prep, and Hadoop. Bayesian statistics was also really interesting to me at the time, so I followed along with a statistical rethinking course on YouTube as well. I was stretching myself pretty thin with school, extra learning, and work. But this extra effort was worth it because I was able to find a great data science internship while I was in school. Then, shortly after graduation, I landed a machine learning focused data scientist position at Coursera. Suddenly, I had access to unlimited free courses, which is a perk from Coursera, and I went all in on extra learning. I already knew a lot of machine learning fundamentals by that point, but that didn't stop me from starting again at the basics, something I highly recommend at every stage of your journey. I took these courses. Learning how to learn. This is a meta skill that made everything else easier. The classic Stanford machine learning specialization, the deep learning.ai deep learning specialization, and the Imperial College London Math for ML specialization, which was my first introduction to calculus and linear algebra in my whole life, believe it or not. I also watched a lot of StatQuest and 3 Blue 1 Brown for intuitive math and statistics to supplement my math studies. Speaking of math for machine learning, one thing I've discovered on this journey is that strong math skills are, unsurprisingly, really useful for actually understanding machine learning at a deep level. And nowadays, there are great resources that help those of us who maybe don't have the strongest math background get up to speed. One resource I really loved when I was learning was the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. What makes Brilliant different is how they transform abstract concepts into interactive visual lessons. Instead of just memorizing formulas, you're solving puzzles and working through problems that build intuition. I've used it to strengthen everything from calculus to linear algebra to probability theory. And it's not just math. Brilliant has tons of content on lots of subjects that are super helpful for data science and machine learning, like a newer course on how LLMs work that breaks down the complex transformer architecture in a way that actually makes sense. One super helpful thing is that Brilliant allows for learning in short, focused sessions, perfect for maintaining consistency during commutes or on your lunch break. 
If you want to try Brilliant for yourself, they're offering my viewers a full 30-day free trial plus 20% off an annual premium subscription. Just click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to get started. Now back to everything else I learned because we are not done yet. If I could characterize those early learning years in my first data science roles, it would really be about dialing in the workings of ML algorithms themselves and starting to think about things like ML ops. While I did read designing data intensive applications during my time at Coursera, which I can definitely recommend by the way, most of what I learned was pretty small scale. I didn't know a lot about engineering or system design yet. Since identifying these weak points, computer science and machine learning system design have been the focus of my learning for the last few years since joining Twitch. Since Twitch is owned by Amazon, I get to do AWS trainings for free and I can do certifications for a discount. So I decided to do the AWS Certified Machine Learning Specialization exam, which was the first big thing I studied for when I started that job. I'll talk a little bit more about my thoughts on that at the end. Then, last year I was preparing to start a second master's degree in computer science, which I have since quit, but I took a bunch of courses on Java, data structures and algorithms, and system design to prep for that. Specifically, I took Java courses from various platforms, including a Java course from Udemy, the Duke Object Oriented Programming in Java Specialization on Coursera, and Georgia Tech's Introduction to Object Oriented Programming of Java Certificate on edX. After that, I did a couple of different DSA courses. So I started with the Neat Code Algorithms and Data Structures Beginner and Advanced courses, which I did in Java to continue improving those skills. Then I took Georgia Tech's Data Structures and Algorithms edX Certificate, also in Java. And finally, Educative's Coding Interview Patterns in Python. After that, I worked through a few system design courses. Specifically, the Neat Code System Design courses, Educative's Grokking System Design, the book Designing Machine Learning Systems, and I'm currently in the middle of a couple more books on ML system design at the moment too. I'm actually gonna have a whole video on how to learn machine learning system design coming out in a few weeks, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. Also in the last few years, I've of course needed to get up to speed on Gen AI and LLMs. I took several internal Amazon trainings and I just finished AI engineering. I actually just posted a really comprehensive summary of that book. Check out that video next. A key takeaway here is that as you advance, the breadth of required knowledge expands. It's important to continue to take time to learn adjacent skills and keep learning throughout your career. Okay, so that was a lot. And this isn't counting the hundreds of videos I've watched and blogs I've read on any number of technical topics over the years. Now for the honest assessment, what actually mattered and what kind of just wasted my time. Here are the high ROI investments and about how long it took me to learn. SQL. The basics take about two to three weeks to learn and I use it daily. Python fundamentals took me two to three months and this is obviously important since it's the foundation for everything and I continue to get better at Python over time. ML and deep learning fundamentals took six to 12 months and this is core expertise. Systems design knowledge is three to six months and this is essential for building scalable solutions. It's something I use every day. ML ops about three to four months for the basics and LLMs and AI engineering. This is obviously something that's ongoing. As a bonus, statistics and causal inference. This is critical for experiment design, but not necessarily a focus for everyone in the machine learning space. And here are some things that had a really low ROI for me. I took an entire Hadoop course. Understanding MapReduce concepts would have been enough. I haven't used this knowledge at all, to be honest. I also spent a lot of time on data visualization tools. These are easily learned on the job and really more relevant for analysts anyway. I don't think you should learn them until you need them and the AWS ML certification. Despite working with AWS ML products every day, I learned very little that I actually use and I spent a ton of time studying for it. It was unnecessarily stressful and just rote memorization, and I highly doubt hiring managers care that I have it. I should have spent that time on project-based learning. But honestly, the most important skill I developed wasn't technical at all. It was learning how to learn efficiently and developing strong study habits that I keep to this day. The specific technologies will change, but the ability to adapt won't. If you're starting this journey with a non-technical background, know that it's absolutely possible, but it will require intentional strategic learning and consistent effort over time. Remember, it's taken me seven years to get where I am today, and I still have a lot to learn. One more reminder, studying is only half the battle. You really have to apply these skills either through professional work or personal projects to truly internalize them. Project-based learning accelerated my progress more than any course alone. Let me know in the comments what you're currently learning or what you're struggling with. If there's interest, I'll dive deeper into specific areas of this learning journey in future videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.